Today I'm going to give you guys some information on how to stay cool while living on the road. What's going on everyone? Back with another episode of Stuff and Things and today we're talking all about air conditioning systems for vans, trucks, trailers, campers, RVs. We're going to teach you guys how to stay cool while you're out there traveling around. Now I've been getting a lot of questions about my recent changes to my AC system. A lot of people want to know how it works, does it keep things cool, and we're going to be going over all of that stuff but first we need to do a little bit of a walk around because no matter what AC unit you have, it won't just work by itself. There are a lot of key components that will help an AC run more efficiently. There are even some simple items that you can buy to have in a van, truck, or RV that will help an AC cool more efficiently. So with all that being said, let's take a look at my current setup, starting with the very first, probably one of the most important things, and that is the power system. Now we're gonna do this as a real quick rundown because I've done videos on everything in this van already. If you guys want to find out more information about the stuff that I'm gonna cover, check the links in the description down below. So right underneath my bench seat here, I have 630 amp hours of lithium batteries. I also have a 3000 watt inverter down there. Right here is my old AC unit. We'll kind of talk about the 120 units a little bit. And then also to go along with the power system, I have a secondary alternator, which you can find in the engine bay. Now, if we come to the back of my van, AC unit conveniently located right above the bed. This is a DC powered 12 volt nomadic cooling 3000. I've been getting a lot of questions on this unit and how it cools. So we will talk about that as well. All right, so now a few things to get out of the way before we get into my personal tips and tricks on living on the road with an AC unit. I've seen a ton of misinformation out there on forums and Facebook pages, just different places on the internet of people talking about AC units, whether it's in a van, a trailer, an RV, whatever it may be. We're going to sort of squash some of those right now. That way, if you are completely new to this, you're thinking about traveling and you live in a hot area or want to travel to a hot area, you want to have AC, this is some stuff that you guys should know. Now the very first thing, just because you have an AC on your van, it does not mean it is going to be as cool as a house. Something that is a rigid structure with really good insulation and great insulation on the windows. You can't set an unrealistic expectation that a van is going to be as cool as a house just because it has an AC on the roof. There's a lot of different factors that go into it like the actual power system that we talked about, the AC unit itself, whether it's a 120 or a 12 volt, and then the actual insulation level of the van. Another factor that a lot of people just don't really seem to comprehend is the places that you park, what you are actually parking on, the area of the country that you are traveling around. Right now, I'm currently in the Prescott National Forest in Arizona, and it was 110 down in Phoenix today. Not ideal for traveling if I'm worried about staying out of the heat and remaining cold and just say I didn't have a good AC system, then I obviously wouldn't be putting myself in this situation. When it comes to the actual parking situation, if you know you're gonna be somewhere for quite a while, pick some trees around you. As you can see, there's a bunch of big pine trees around here that provide me with shade. Granted, parking in the shade is not gonna be great for the solar, but solar isn't as great as everyone thinks it really is. I really have solar on top of my van just to sort of keep the batteries topped off. If I park the van for a long time, it will keep the batteries charged to 100%, which will allow me to use the lights occasionally, maybe charge my phone, and also run my 12 volt fridge. So that's another thing, kind of a sidebar, don't expect solar to be the end all be all when it comes to power systems in a vehicle like this. Lithium is going to be your best friend. So again, parking situations. Don't take a big giant silver van and park it in an asphalt parking lot when it's 110 degrees outside. If you leave that van for an hour and come back, it's 110 outside, it's probably gonna be 115, 120, maybe even hotter on the inside. That's basically the equivalent of taking a big metal toaster 
turning it on and then putting it inside of an oven. I don't care what kind of AC system you have, if the sun is beating down on a van like this and it's 110 degrees outside and it's already 120 inside, it's going to take a ton of power to cool that thing down to a temperature that is even remotely tolerable. If you know you're gonna be parking and staying somewhere for the night, then take a few more steps before you just park it and leave it in a place that's super hot. The first thing I like to do is that when I'm roughly 10, 15 minutes out from my destination and I know it's going to be super hot, I blast the AC in the actual van. Turn that thing all the way down to like 60, crank up the fans, and even if I'm cold right now, it's actually cooling down the rest of the van without using any of your actual power and you're not actually using your AC. We could also talk about driving around with the AC on, but that's something that I personally don't do. If you have questions about that, you can ask down below, but I'm not gonna cover that in this video. So if I'm 10 or 15 minutes out from my destination, I'm already blasting the AC from the actual Sprinter van to cool down the ambient temperature inside the van. That way when I do park and it is super hot out, the AC has less work to do. Another thing to note is what you are actually parking on top of. If you're parking on top of asphalt, obviously it's going to be much, much hotter than mud and dirt. I probably spend close to like 80% of my time in national forests as I travel around, which is where I am right now. But occasionally you do end up in a parking lot here or there. So that is always something I keep in mind when there are super high temperatures outside. Now when it comes to actually picking out your AC unit, this is going to be dependent on what you are actually doing. I have my van set up, that way I can travel completely off grid. I have not plugged my van in in almost a year now, probably. Because of my power system and the secondary alternator and the solar does do a little bit, I'm able to travel full time and live out of this thing without having to worry about power. Now when it comes to AC and power, doesn't matter if you have a 12 volt unit or a 120 unit, if you are hopping around from campground to campground or RV parks and you are actually plugging your van into shore power at night, then this doesn't really matter to you. Before I had a lithium setup in my van, you guys can watch back through old videos, I was in the deep south of Texas in like the middle of August, and it was extremely hot and extremely humid, so I would sort of plan out my days going from RV park to RV park. At the time I had AGM batteries, I had the old 120 unit on the roof, which is super power consuming compared to a 12 volt unit. And when I was traveling like that, it was completely fine. I would get to my destination, I would plug the van in and I could use as much power as I wanted. The AC and the power setup didn't really matter. Now when it comes to running a unit like my new DC Nomadic Cooling 3000, it's a 12 volt unit, so I don't have to turn my inverter on, which I had to do with the old unit. And because it basically sips on power compared to the old unit, I don't have to worry about power all that much. So I have been getting a lot of questions about how the 12 volt unit does compared to the old unit. Does it cool things down? How does it do with the power system? So here are some of my thoughts on that. For starters, if you have AGM batteries in your van, chances are they're going to be dead and unusable in about two years. I got roughly two years out of the AGM batteries that I had in this van initially. I had 300 amp hours, but AGM batteries, you're really only going to be able to use about half of that life. So I really only had like 150 amp hours of usable power. At that point, staying cool should not be your number one priority. You should prioritize having a really good power system. Now let's say you do have a good power system. You have 400 or 600 amp hours of lithium power. And let's also say you still have a 120 unit on top. Does that work? Of course it does. If you watch back through some of my old videos, that's actually the evolution of my van and how I did all of this trial and error and I was testing things out so you guys don't have to. So with my 600 amp hours and the 120 unit on top, it worked, but it wasn't as efficient as it could be. I could run the AC for like roughly six hours, of course, depending on all of those different factors that I already talked about. How hot it is outside, the ambient temperature inside, where you're parking, are you in direct sunlight, how insulated is your van? All of those things factor into how cool you're going to be able to keep it. And for the old unit, I did have to run the inverter, which is already using more power. Now it definitely got me by in a pinch. However, I did not have a soft start module in my old 120 unit. 
If you do install a soft start unit, then chances are it's going to be a little bit less stressful on the power system. The biggest thing when a system like that fails is when the compressor actually kicks on because your voltage will just spike. It's going to try to suck a ton of power all at once and if I had my old inverter, which I believe was a 2000 watt inverter, that thing would have turned off immediately, it would not have worked. There were even some times when I was plugged into shore power, cooking and running the AC and it was just consuming too much power and the inverter would start throwing codes. With that soft start, it will probably save you, but I don't have my own true personal experience with that, so I'm not gonna talk about that anymore. So the 120 unit with a good lithium system, does it work? Yes, does it cool efficiently? Yeah, it stays pretty cool, but it's going to deplete your batteries very quickly. Now for the setup that I'm currently running, we already talked about it, full lithium setup, secondary alternator, got 315 watts of solar on the roof, 12 volt AC unit. As of right now, I believe this is the best setup that you could possibly run. Of course, you could add more batteries and things like that, it would make the setup even better. But I am able to cool the van down in pretty hot temperatures and I can do it efficiently to a point where sometimes I'm only using like 25% of my total battery capacity after running the AC for an entire night. Now as an example, currently in Arizona, I got into Phoenix last night at about 8 o'clock. I found a parking spot at about 9 o'clock. Got to the spot, the sun was down already, but I parked on asphalt, so again, it's gonna be pretty hot. I was pumping my AC before I actually parked, but outside it was still 100 degrees. I went to the back, turned on the AC immediately, and just sort of hung out. By the time I went to sleep, three hours later, it was midnight, Check the weather again, it was still 90 degrees out. I don't think it dipped below like 88 degrees the entire night. I woke up in the morning, turned my AC off, let's say roughly around nine o'clock, so it ran for 12 hours straight, and I still had 74% battery left. I was completely cool the entire night. I set it to about 70 degrees in there, and I actually slept with blankets on because I was chilling. So I do believe there is a lot of misinformation out there, people saying things like, 12 volt units are garbage, they're too expensive, it doesn't cool as well as a 120 unit. It may not have the same BTU ratings, but when it comes to ratings like that and we're talking about a vehicle, you can basically just ball that up and throw it out the window. Since the install of my 12 volt unit, I've had absolutely no issues with keeping the van cool, I've had no issues with power in the van. I think the lowest my battery has ever gotten to was like 34% of that 630 amp hours, and that was when we were in Moab running the AC for about two days straight. As long as you follow some of those tips, which to me sort of seem like common sense, don't park in super hot areas, don't park in direct sunlight, in asphalt, then I really think that a DC unit is absolutely the best way to go. Now I do have a few relatively inexpensive items in my van that definitely keep it a lot cooler and it also helps me conserve a ton of power. So let's jump back inside and show you guys some of that. All right, all right, back in the van. Now when it comes to keeping this whole area cool, as you guys can probably tell from videos, it's not a big space to keep cool. There are a few weak points throughout the van and that is found right here behind me. Glass windows, like this right here, are not very good when it comes to insulation. In the winter time, you're going to lose a lot of warmth and heat from the inside of the cabin out through that glass. If it's super cold outside, that cold is going to come in right through that glass. Same thing sort of applies in the summertime. Heat is gonna be transferred right through that glass, and then heat just basically negates the cold. So up here, if the sun is shining through here, it's not gonna cool down all that efficiently. So what you should do is invest in some really nice window covers because that will keep the cool in and keep the heat out. So these are my window covers for the front. They're coming from a company known as This Van Life, I believe. They're absolutely not a sponsor. I paid full price for these things and they were super expensive. So it's not really something that I'm gonna recommend for everyone. You could use the stock window shades that came with your van if you're in something like a Winnebago Revel. These I do really like though, they're insulated, so in the winter time, it keeps it really nice and toasty in here, keeps the cold out. They fold up really small, at least the side ones do. The middle one is kind of thick, but I just throw that in the back whenever I'm not using it. Now, if you don't cover your windows already, just do it. It's gonna make your life a lot easier and a lot cooler inside the van. 
Now, when it comes to my side windows, these are double paned from Dometic, like I mentioned. That does help keep the cool in a little bit, but obviously if it's sunny outside, cover up those windows too. Now, if we look at the outside of these window covers, this material that these are made out of is reflective, so it's gonna bounce light off and it's gonna keep it significantly cooler in here. So if you're worried about staying cool, you can't seem to cool down the inside of your van, cover your windows, it's super simple. I also see a lot of people talk about insulation on doors like this and they cram every nook and cranny with Havelock wool and stuff like that, which is great, it definitely works, but you have to keep in mind that doors are metal. If it's super cold outside and it's beating on the side of the van, the wool will insulate it a little bit, but it's metal all the way through to the inside. A lot of people don't understand this. You can insulate this door as much as you want, but no matter if it's hot or cold outside, that's gonna be reflected right here on the inside because it's metal on metal contact. You would think that that's common sense, but some people just really don't understand that. Now, probably one of my last tips for getting a van cool and keeping it cool, control the area that you are cooling down. Now, if you have an AC unit and you plan on going out to mountain bike or you're going to hike, you're leaving your vehicle for any extended amount of time. I cannot and will not recommend you ever leave a pet like a dog or a cat inside your vehicle and rely on an AC. I just don't think that that's the right thing to do. Maybe if you have one of those alarms that is telling you the actual indoor temperature, you might be okay with that, but I would not recommend it. If you are trying to leave a pet in a vehicle like this, you're gonna have to cool down the entire thing from front to back if your AC is in the back like this right here. So don't leave your pets in a hot vehicle, obviously. If you're not leaving your pet in a vehicle, then like I said, control the space that you are cooling down. I'm mainly driving or I'm outside of the van for most of my days while I'm on the road, so I typically never cool down the entire van. If I want to do that, like I said, I will run the AC on full blast until I get to the destination where I'm stopping, and then maybe I want to edit a video up front. As soon as I stop, I'll come back here and turn on the AC unit. That's probably the most efficient way to do it. I could drive with this on because of my secondary alternator. It'll spin up enough power that I'm not actually consuming power while this is running. I'll actually be feeding power back into the system. But I don't like to run this thing and use it unnecessarily because that will obviously shorten the life of it. Now, because I'm not cooling down the entire van during the day, I have this little thing right here, which has saved me a ton of power and it keeps me super cool at night even when it's like 100 plus degrees outside. So this right here is a little partition coming from Canyon Adventure vans and this could go for any van really. I partition the bed off like that. This also doubles as a blackout curtain. I can zip this thing all the way down to the floor and then I only need to cool down that little space between where the AC is on the roof and my actual bed. Why would I cool down this entire area at night when I could just cool down this area right here? If you control the environment that you are cooling down, it's going to be much, much more efficient. It's especially good in my case because back here is my AC with the vents. The temperature sensor is right back here in the return vent. So that sensor is monitoring the air temperature that is going back into the unit and once it gets to the set desired temperature, then it will kick off the compressor and just blow the fan. I didn't even mention this yet, but the 12 volt unit is significantly quieter than this big thing sitting on the floor over here. Now when I partition this part of the van off and I'm only cooling down my actual bed area, Sometimes during the day, I'll even just hang out back here if I don't have anything going on. It's dark, I can cool it down in roughly like 10 minutes, and then once it's at a good temperature, I don't need to worry about the rest of the van. I could be sitting in direct sunlight, it could be super hot over here, but that doesn't matter because the AC has already cooled down this to its desired temperature, and once it's there, it's not going to be working as hard. When the area back here is cool, even in 100 degree temperatures, I've seen this exact setup on the Victron Connect app saying that it could run for like three days straight. That is a hell of a long time to be running an AC in a van like this. 
When it comes to the actual power draw of a system like that, it may spike as high as 100 amps when it comes to the 3000 unit. 2000 unit will see significantly less than that. And then if you go with something like a Dometic, that will probably end up being significantly less, like 45 to 50 amps maybe. So as you can see, there's a lot of different factors that go into keeping a van cool. My 12 volt unit has been kick ass. I highly recommend it to anyone who is concerned with AC units now. And hopefully you can see now that keeping a vehicle cool like this is not as simple as, oh, I have an AC unit on my roof, so it's gonna be just like my house. There's a little bit that you can do on your part to make your life much, much easier. So that's all I've got for AC information while living on the road, whether you're in a van, truck, camper, trailer, RV. Maybe you're not even doing that yet. Maybe you're thinking about getting into the van life. If you are, I really hope this helped you guys. And if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments down below and I will try to answer anything as best as possible. I didn't want to get too into depth on power consumption and how many amps it's drawing when it's running, but if you guys want to know all of that stuff, I have documented information and screenshots of my Victron app. I can provide you guys with all that stuff if you really want to nerd out about AC setups. So let me know in the comments down below if this did help you out or you enjoyed this video. I'd appreciate it if you left a like on it. And if you're new to the channel, consider clicking subscribe because I make new videos every week. As always, thank you guys for watching. I'll talk to you in the next one.